Should Christians celebrate Halloween? Ooh, I know this is a hot topic, but I also know that y'all have been asking me. And I am a teacher of the Word of God. And so I have to teach directly from the Bible when it comes to things like this. I don't have any part of the world. I'm not worldly. And I don't celebrate worldly holidays. But I also don't condemn those who do because I grew up in the tradition as well. It is everywhere right now. Every store has Halloween decor and it is embedded into our brains that it is an okay holiday to celebrate as Christians. So I wanna tell you today why it's not. Why it's not by the Bible, not just by a person saying it. First, let's talk about the history of Halloween. Halloween actually has been around for a very long time, even before it was called Halloween. It was All Hallows Eve. And then even before that, it was All Saints Day. And so basically it is a emergence of two different things. All Hallows Eve used to be where they would honor the saints. And sometimes they would get very spiritual with it and they would say that they could talk to the spirits before they departed for their death and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But basically it all comes from a spiritual aspect. All Halloween comes from something very spiritual and also very dark. The Bible tells us time and time again that we are not to have anything to do with darkness, with necromancy, with the fruitless deeds of darkness, with witchcraft, with sorcery, with magic, with all the things that Halloween is wrapped into. No matter how you try to sugarcoat it, Halloween does go against the Bible. I'm going to read a few scriptures to you now, and if you still take this the wrong way, and you still think it's just too serious, that those who don't celebrate Halloween are taking it too seriously. I want you to ask yourself this one question. Would Jesus do it? Go back to the old days of WWJD. What would Jesus do? Because I can tell you right now, the Bible specifically explains who Jesus is, and he had nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Therefore, we shouldn't either. I know some churches right now are trying to conform to the modern day traditions. They're trying to conform and they're having people blindly sitting in these church pews who are participating in things like trunk or treat and Halloween decorations in the church. And it is a disgrace. God would not be pleased knowing there is witchcraft, sorcery, or anything of the darkness in his churches. We would be getting a terrible letter from Paul right about now. All right, let's read some of these scriptures and really take them into heart. Don't get convictions and feel upset about it because convictions can change you. When you learn the truth and you are opened up to the knowledge of this, then it's up to you and you have free will, you have choices. You still can go and celebrate, but it's not going to be of God. Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. I do not want you to be participants with the demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? I'm going to put a list here of all the places that you can go to and read more scriptures on Halloween. It's not going to say the word specifically, but it is going to talk about the festivals that they did in the Bible. And they're going to line up with what we do now with Halloween. It is all in partaking with demonic forces and activity. And I know that that's something people don't want to think about. We live in this church world today that people are just seriously living in the flesh. They're not even looking at the spiritual aspect, not even thinking that we are spiritual beings. Therefore, we allow things into our life. We allow darkness into our lives. We allow demons into our lives when we partake in the cup of demons. When you are going out, no matter how innocent and harmless you think it is, you are exposing yourself and you are exposing your children to darkness, to demons, to witchcraft. Even if you are doing a church trunk or treat, what is right by the Lord is what is right by the Lord. It will line up biblically. If your church if the people around you and no one understands why you're acting this way, God does. God sees your heart. God sees that you are being different. You are set apart. You're not supposed to be exactly like everyone else. You're not supposed to conform to the things of this world. So sometimes even when the church celebrates those things, you know better. 
You read your Bible. It tells you exactly what to do, what not to do. You ask yourself that question, what would Jesus do? And you know that it isn't right. But I was once on a journey where I thought it was okay too. I took my kids trick-or-treating. I went growing up every year. So I understand that this is a hard thing to give up because it's been a tradition, a ritual for so long. But when you want to grow closer to Christ and you are on that journey to learning and, and growing with him, then you have to give up things of the world. Halloween is demonic. There's no question about it. It comes from a demonic practice and it is still demonic today. No matter how you dress it up, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. It is still Halloween. It is still participating. No matter how you participate, it is still participating. I want you to keep that in mind as everyone around you prances around as witches and devils and things that are not godly and you look at them, your eyes may be opened. You may finally be like, you know what? This ain't right. And that's what happened to me. I actually went to a church and I walked in and the preacher's wife was dressed as a witch and the associate pastor was a goddess and her child was in a zip up demon costume. And I just thought, wow, this is terrible. In that moment, God gave me discernment and he showed me that this wasn't right, that this was not of his doing, that this was not of God. And that was the last time that I ever participated, even if the church participated. I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And so do you. God gives you an internal compass with that. He gives you discernment. The Holy Spirit guides you. If you participate in things like this, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. The Bible also talks about that. I'm not here just to convince you not to do Halloween. I'm here to convince you to get in your Bible. Read it. Learn more about Jesus and let the Holy Spirit guide you to the truth. This will be a series... I'm actually really excited about it because there's a lot of scripture behind this. We're going to talk about some of the things of Halloween like trick-or-treating, pumpkin carving, witches and witchcraft, and all kinds of things. We're going to bring it to light and then you can make your decision whether this Halloween season is something that you want to partake in or not. Don't shoot the messenger. And also, if you get very upset about this, just know that's convictions. And now it's up to you whether you make excuses for those convictions and justify why you're doing it or you change and you seek God and you repent and you tell him you're sorry for participating in fruitless deeds of darkness and you turn from that sin. I will see you once a week for this Halloween series. 